Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today we will talk about a very important topic of obstetric, and that is the first and second degree perineal tear repair. In order to get up to date knowledge about the obstetric anal sphincter injuries, I would recommend you to study the RCUG guideline about OAC. In this video, first of all, we will study the requirements of the perineal tear repair, and then one by one, I will discuss how to repair the first and second degree perineal tears. So, what are the requirements of perineal tear repair? The repair of perineum requires, first of all, the good lighting and visualization. Secondly, proper surgical instruments. Thirdly, the suture material is very important. Effective suture material is extremely important and compared with the surgical repair using chromic suture or cat cut, uh, repair using 2-0 or 3-0 polygalactin or micral suture results in decreased wound dehiscence and less postpartum perineal pain. And lastly, we shouldn't forget the importance of adequate analgesia to the patient during repair. So, how to manage the first degree perineal tear? Most of the first degree tear close spontaneously without sutures. Okay, so close spontaneously without suture, you have to remember it. And some of them will simply require one or two interrupted sutures, but not in all the cases. As you know that first degree only involves the vaginal mucosa, so you may need to take the one or two stitches. Coming to the management of the second degree perineal tear, first of all, we need to provide the adequate anesthesia. Anesthesia early to provide sufficient time for it to take effect. Secondly, uterine massage and fundal pressure. Okay, for that we have to ask an assistant to massage the uterus and provide the proper fundal pressure. That should be proper gentle fundal pressure. Next comes the careful examination. We need to carefully examine the vagina, perineum and cervix. If the tear is long and deep through the perineum, we need to inspect to make sure that there is no third or fourth degree tear. Next comes the rectal examination. A rectal examination is helpful in determining the extent of injury and ensuring the third and fourth degree laceration is not overlooked. So first of all, place a gloved finger in the anus. Secondly, gently lift the finger and identify the sphincter. Thirdly, feel for the tone or tightness of the sphincter. Then change to clean sterile gloves. If sphincter is not involved, proceed with the repair. Now, what is the basic technique of repair of the second degree tear? Repair of the second degree tear is done like episiotomy repair, which means it is sutured in layers by opposing the vaginal mucosa, perineal muscles and the skin. Let us talk about the procedure of repair. I will identify the apex of vaginal laceration first. This is what I have to say in the talk station or in OSCE station. An anchoring suture is placed one centimeter above the apex of laceration and the vaginal mucosa and the rectovaginal fascia are closed using a running unlocked suture. Now what to do if the apex is far away? If the apex is too far into the vagina to be seen, I will place an anchoring suture at the most distally visible area of laceration and traction is applied on the suture to bring the apex into view. Next comes the perineal muscles approximation. After this, the perineal muscles are reapproximated with either one or two transverse interrupted polygalactin sutures or with a running suture that is continued from vaginal mucosa repair and brought underneath the hymenal ring. However, the interrupted approach is preferred because it facilitates a more anatomic repair, allowing the reapproximation of the bulbocavernous muscles and the reattachment of vaginal septum with the minimum use of the sutures. Last comes the approximation of the skin. When the muscles are repaired anatomically, the overlying skin is usually well approximated and skin sutures generally are not required. If the skin uh, requires suturing, we use the running subcuticular sutures and those have been found to be uh, superior to the uh, interrupted transcutaneous sutures. 
Next come the rectal examination at the end of the procedure. If the tear is deep, perform a rectal examination to make sure that no stages are in the rectum. And it's very important to do rectal examination because if we leave stitches in the rectum, that can result in rectovaginal fistula in future. So that brings us to the end of my presentation. I would like to complete it with these golden words. Success is the result of doing small things. Never stop when you are tired. Stop only when you are done. Thank you so much. Wish you all the best. Allah Hafiz.